So as you know, today's topic is cable state bridge design. And we are going to divide this session into two parts. So today we are going to cover the uh, basic idea of the cable state bridge design, the main concept, and the what is the specialty, what we need to consider especially for the cable state bridge and also including the nonlinear effects with the capability of MIDA civil and we will try to find the initial cable force without the construction stage for now. So considering the final complete state and then we are going to try to find the cable forces with the two different methods. Firstly, we want to have a test with the traditional method, which is the drill displacement method. And also, I will introduce you additional method, which was uh, traditionally used. And surely, I will show you our MIDA civil functionality for this unknown load factor and cable force tuning. So that is the topic today I'm going to cover. And one week after the next Monday, we are going to go through this topic. So construction stage analysis, including the backward and forward analysis method, unknown load factor, Lego fit force, and dy dynamic analysis. So those uh, results and those topic will be covered next week. So it is kind of the continued topic, but at the end of the session, uh, as I mentioned, I would like to give you the one test model so that you can have you you can try to find your own cable force in the initial cables initial state model. Okay, so. Mm, since the session is not that long, so I hope you could ask the question at the end of the session. Then also we can discuss more details for your questions. So I would like to start with the major characteristics of the cable state bridge. So cable state bridge is the structural system, effectively composing cable, main gutter and towers in the cable state bridge by entering the initial pretension force of the cable it can reduce the bending moment in the gutter and the depth of gutter can be also reduced so you can see the major characteristic of the cable bridge so the deck will act just like the continued continuous beam because in the anchorage position of the cable, it can be we can assume it as the support position. So if we check the bending moment of the main girder, so its bending moment distribution is very similar to the continuous beam with the several supports, elastic support. And tech and the pylon will have the compression force. So that is the difference, one of the difference comparing to other bridge type. So normally the axial force is not significant in the general bridge type, but differently in the cable state bridge, we can see the comparably large uh, compression force in the deck. And in the cable state bridge, uh, in order to find the cable force, we can use the influence line just similar to the moving load analysis to our MIDA civil. So influence line can be used to find the cable force. But this influence line method is using the linear superposition, which means 
it is the approximate method that assuming the element as the linear behavior, not considering the nonlinear behavior. But that is the general concept uh, in the most of the cable state bridge. I will explain you at the end uh, when we need to consider their nonlinear effects and when we can consider it just to, as the linear behavior. Also, the nonlinear material property like the clip and shrinkage will influence the design and that effect should be considered for the concrete deck. And this is the procedure of the design for the cable state bridge. Uh, regardless of the MIDAS-Civil, so this is the general procedure that engineers will go through when they are designing the cable state bridge. First of all, they will determine the back span to main span ratio and then the determining the cable spacing and deck stiffness, also pylon height. And then in the initial state, they will determine the preliminary cable force. So in this part is the first part that we need to determine the cable force, assuming that the structure is uh, constructed to the end. And for this, there are many methods that are practically used. And using MIDAS-Civil, we can use unknown load factor. And after uh, finalizing the deck form and the deck design, then finally, in order to find the checking force of the cable, we can perform backward analysis or forward analysis. And as you know, MIDAS-Civil supports both methods. And how to determine this cable jacking force? So Civil provides uh, these two main functions, leg of fit force, unknown load factor. So up to here, so we can simulate the construction sequence and find, find the jacking force of the cable. And then we can perform the static analysis and the dynamic analysis if required. So let's see more details for each of the step what needs to be determined. Firstly, the backspan to main span ratio. So backspan to main span ratio is as you can see in this figure, the ratio between A and B. The optimal length will be between 0.4 to 0.45 to of the main span. What happens if we have the longer backspan? In that case, the, we, there could be the uplift in the pier, or the, the, there could be the effect of the cable force from the cables connected to the top pylon. Also, we need to have the proper cable spacing. And normally, when the cable state bridge is constructed, it will be constructed like the free cantilever method. So each of the uh, segment will be installed, and then cable will be installed for each of the span one by one. It means if we have the too long cable spacing, then during the construction, there could be also uh, on forces or the deformation will be excessive. So in order to prevent that, we need to have the proper cable spacing. And for the deck stiffness, uh, deck stiffness is deflection of the longitudinal girder is preliminarily determined by the stay layout. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the, unlike the other type of the bridge, the main girder of the cable state bridge will be under compression. So in order to prevent the buckling due to this compressive force, we need to reduce the depth of the main girder. 
So poor product stiffness should be determined considering this condition. And pylon height needs to be determined. The pylon height will determine the overall stiffness of the structure. If we have the uh, the higher height of the pylon, in that case, it means the angle of the cable will be also increased, and it can make the cable dimension to be smaller. But it means also the cable length will be becoming longer and it will cause the larger deflection in the deck. So what will be the optimal height? So if we check the, this angle of the cable, 45 degree is the most efficient cable stay angle. And if, we, if our cables are within this degree from the 25 to 65 degree, then there will be no significant effect in the cable, cable degree. And also the, for the ratio between this uh, above height and the main span, the optimal ratio will be 0.2 to 0.25. And next step is determining the preliminary cable force. Uh, preliminary cable force is determined due to the dead load. And in order to find the proper cable force, we check the deflection of the deck and the pylon. So normally in this stage, the bending stiffness is ignored for the main girder and the pylon, and they can be assumed as the simple, simple truss, and then we can find the initial cable force. Ignoring the uh, bending stiffness, is valid because the bending stiffness is quite small comparing to the uh, axial stiffness of of the uh, pylon. And after determining the cable force in the main span, and then backspan cable force can be determined considering the equivalent condition of the horizontal force component between the main span and backspan. So with those consideration, we can determine the preliminary cable force. A more detailed method with the traditional method and the uh, my DASB method uh, will be reviewed in the next step, next uh, slide. Next step is determining the deck form. Deck form is determined considering the main span length and the deck width. Concrete deck can be proper when the span range is between these and the composite deck will be used for the longer main span, like the more than 400 meter. Above 600 meter main span, hybrid combination can be used. It means the back span will be uh, constructed with the concrete and the main span will be constructed with the steel. And after that, deck design 
is the next step for the engineers. So by tuning the cable force, we can have the minimum, we can minimize the moments of the deck. And then next step is determining the deck erection, which will be the most important step. So this deck erection force can be determined by the backward analysis or forward analysis. In the previous step, we have found the cable pretension force in the final state, but it will not be identical to the deck erection forces for each of the construction stages. So this should be determined separately. So for this, we those two analysis methods can be used. And then the static analysis can be performed. In the static analysis, the, it is common that considering the element as the beam element. So for the symmetric cable state bridge, we can model only half of them, or otherwise we can model all of them, but using the bar elements or beam element. In this case, it's very common that the cable is considered as the truss element. And sag effects of the cable can be ignored. And in order to consider the seismic analysis or the response due to the wind turbulence or the vibration effect, we can perform vibration dynamic analysis. So that is the uh, main procedure that engineers will go through when they are designing the cable state bridge. So let's now let's go to the MIDA civil functionality. So I guess all of you already know very well about our wizard. So using the wizard, we can generate the cable state bridge easily. But in this case, only the geometry will be generated. Here, I want to emphasize the type of the element. So we can model the cable state bridge. And cable can be modeled using the trust element or cable element. So what will be the difference and when the cable element will be used? And this, even though we use the cable element depending on the analysis type, whether it will be the linear analysis or nonlinear analysis, the element will be differently applied in my decibel. So I want to explain you that part. Firstly, the truss element. I guess uh, this part is already very familiar for you. So when we select the truss element or when we model the cable using the truss element, so uniaxial tension or compression elements will be generated. And it is used to model the space truss or diagonal brace. So it can undergo the axial deformation only. So we are already very familiar with the truss element. But if we model the cables using the cable element, tension only element, it can be considered as the equivalent truss element or it can be considered as the elastic cardinal cable element. So two different type of the elements can be considered by model them using the cable element. And when the, mod the cables will be considered as the equivalent truss, it will be considered in the linear analysis. And what will be the special characteristic for this element is it will consider the decrease of axial force 
of the cable due to sagging effect. So this equation shows the uh, stiffness of the equivalent truss. So elastic stiffness, which is this equation, is the normal elastic stiffness of the bar element due to the axial force. With this, additionally, the sag stiffness is considered. In the sag stiffness, you can see the T is the tension force, which means the cable stiffness will be affected and changed by the applied tension force. And in this case, the length is not the element length. Length will be considered as the projection length, horizontal projection length. And also the weight per the unit length will be considered. So using this formula, so sec stiffness can be considered. And this element, this stiffness will be used for the axial stiffness of the equivalent truss in the linear analysis. What happens if we perform the nonlinear analysis, geometric nonlinear analysis? In the case, the cable element will be considered as the cardinal element. It means it will consider the large displacement, oh, sorry, large displacement effect. So not only the sagging effect, but also the tangent stiffness of the cable will be considered in when we consider the geometric nonlinear analysis. So differential equation for each directional length of the cable in the global coordinate system are applied, as you can see. So, in my dashboard, there are three different types of the elements when we model the cable state bridge, truss element, equivalent truss, which is considering the sagging effect, and two cardinal elements, which considering both sagging effect and the large displacement effect. Uh, when the engineers are dealing with the cable state bridge, uh, their cross-section shape is not identical to the girder bridge or the segmental bridge. That's why the SPC will be more commonly used, so we can introduce the SPC function for them. Because as mentioned, in order to, since the main girder is under the compression and we want to prevent the buckling of the main girder and also their bending moment is comparably small. Because of that, the depth of the main girder is smaller than the other type of the bridge. So this type of the general or irregular shape section is commonly used. In that case, the SPC will be more uh, useful. And nonlinear effect of the cable bridge. So this part already explained with the element. So sag effect is already explained. We can consider this by model them using the cable element in the linear analysis. Also, if we need it, we can consider the P-delta effect. This is the part of the construction stage analysis control dialog box. And this P-delta effect can be considered as the uh, approximation of the nonlinear analysis, geometric nonlinear analysis. And large displacement analysis can be considered by checking on this option in the construction stage analysis control. In the cable state bridge, always accumulate stage option will be used. And geometric st stiffness and the sag effect of the cable both will be considered. 
Sometimes engineers will ask you how I can consider the uh, material nonlinearity or nonlinear behavior of the member. Not the cable, but uh, peer or abutments. So in this case, uh, we can recommend them to use inelastic time history analysis. So material nonlinearity can be considered for this cable state bridge using the inelastic time history analysis by assigning hinge, inelastic hinge to the desired member. Okay, now I want to move to the uh, next topic, the initial cable force. So we want to determine the initial cable force, assuming the structure is in the final complete state. So there are several traditional methods, and one of the common methods would be the zero displacement method. So by performing the initial analysis, the cable coordination configuration initial cable force can be determined. A major concept of the design is reducing the bending moment in the tower and girder due to dead load. So this traditional zero displacement method is using the fixing fixed vertical displacement in the cable checking position, like those position. In the current cable state bridge, the number of the cables are enough. Therefore, the effects of the cable horizontal force of the cable to the beam moments of the main girder is comparably small. So in this method, the vertical displacement is restrained at the cable anchorage position so that the moment distribution of the main girder will be similar to the continuous beam. This method is valid when there is no large inclination in the longitudinal girder. So let me explain you more details how the initial cable force can be found in this method. So I want to show you with the model for that that I have tested. So firstly, we assume we do not want to model all the cable. So we just assume in the cable anchorage position, we make the support, as you can see here, roller support. So, and only self-weight will be applied. Due to the self-weight, we can obtain the reaction force. So we have obtained this reaction force. Using this reaction force, we can assume the cable force. So using the reaction, assuming the cable force particle components becoming this reaction force. So as we already know the length ratio where the cable will be installed, so length and the sine or tangent, we can obtain it using the length of the cable. So cable force can be determined. From this cable force, horizontal components can also be determined. So from this simple calculation, we have calculated the cable force and the horizontal components of the cable. After that, we want to apply this vertical and the horizontal components of the cable force into the nodal load. So this time, if you look at the model, so D 
this is the point that first cable will be installed and it is the symmetric bridge so same force is applied to here. So horizontal components and the vertical components calculated here has been applied as the nodal loads of these nodes. Similarly for the second cable, third cable, so on. So we have applied the uh, force, the nodal force, considering the vertical and the horizontal components of the cable force. Using this, we can calculate the moment distribution. So after applying all of these force, We simply perform the analysis and then we have obtained the moment distribution. In this uh, load combination, so I applied all the forces in the one combination. So under this load combination, we can obtain the moment distribution. If I display only the main girder, so we can see the moment distribution here. So moment distribution as mentioned at the beginning. So their moment distribution is very similar to the continuous girder considering the anchorage position as the uh, support position. Just uh, surely when we are applying these nodal loads, uh, I have deleted that uh, supports that initially assumed in the cable anchorage position. But because of the cable force, so their moment distribution is just like the continuous uh, gutter moment distribution. So after determining this moment distribution, also, we can tune the cable nodal force so that all the moment value is in between my targeted range. So I check the range and all the forces are in between the, my targeted range, which was the 5,000 uh, kilonewton meter. So now, after that, we need to uh, fix the horizontal movement of the pylon and then we can tune the cable force. So in the next model, now cable is modeled and the same cable force that determined which has the same horizontal and vertical component nodes. Now cable force is applied with this cable force, we can check the, we can now restrain the horizontal displacement of the pylon. And then our target is having the zero displacement in the main girder here. So, If we check the displacement, we have uh, already very small displacement in this uh, main girder. So we can make tuning a little bit more for the cable in order to have the exactly zero displacement in the main girder, this main girder, main span, the center nodes. After tuning this after making this node as the zero. And then, next step is releasing the horizontal displacement of the pylon. And, but even though we release the horizontal displacement of the pylon, we want to have the small horizontal displacement of the top pylon. So with this concept, we can tune the cable force a little more. 
at the moment I have a quite large uh, displacement in the horizontal force, but with the several try and error, we can tune the cable force. We can change the cable force and check the displacements again and again. So finally, our horizontal displacement of the pylon and the main gutter of displacements will be coming uh, almost to zero. So that is the traditional method, the zero displacement method. Uh, when I tried this method, so up to the step here, getting the moment distribution was quite simple. So in the cable anchorage position, we can simply enter the supports and obtain the cable vertical components and calculate the cable force and obtain the horizontal component and getting the moment distribution. That's all. So that part was quite simple, just a simple calculation. But after that, in order to find the horizontal force tuning of the pylon, that part was very complex and required a lot of try and error. And I tried several times, but Actually, I could not get the uh, final um, satisfied displacement using this method, which means the engineers will, may go through the quite similar procedure and they may need the many try and error procedure in order to find the proper the displacement and the force di required force range. I want to explain you more. Uh, traditional methods, two more traditional methods. One is force equilibrium method. This is also quite a similar concept, but this method is proper when there is the large inclination in the longitudinal girder. The horizontal force of the cable can result in the additional bending moment. So force equilibrium method considers the effect of this horizontal force. That's why this method can be used with the large inclination of the longitudinal girder. So how we can try to find the initial cable force in this method? Similarly, we can ignore the main or the cables and then in the cable anchorage position, we can enter the ruler. After that, we can obtain the moment distribution due to the dead loads. Similarly, that will be called as the, our target moment. And then, we will make the main pylon and delete the previous support and enter the cable force. So, in this process, in order to have the obtain the target moment that we obtained in the previous stage, we can tune the cable force and then we can determine the cable force for that. So, this part also requires the try and error in order to have the target moment distribution in this structure. For that, um, the matrix method will be used. So this was uh, not that simple comparing to the previous method but it also requires quite a try and error procedure. But the basic concept was quite similar to the previous one, that assuming the anchorage position as the support and then determining the cable force. And also in this method, the target moment of the pylon will be also zero. The other method is a force method. In force method, we can assume the main member force by converting the structure as determined structure. Using the member force due to the live load, member force due to the dead load can be obtained. 
Member force can be effectively determined considering the material property. So how to determine the cable force in here is, let's say this is the, our cable layout, cable bridge layout. And here, due to the dead load, we can obtain such a moment distribution. After that, in this structure, we assume the structure as the determinate structure. So you can see the hinges in each position. So with this hinge, the st structure is changed to the determinated structure. And in this determinated structure, in this hinge position, we can assume the member force. The engineer can determine the desired member force in each of the position here and here and main girder or the this pylon and main girder here and here. So determine the desired member force as you can see in this figure. And in order to obtain this member force, the cable force will be applied. That is the force method. So engineer can uh, freely determine their member force distribution as they want. And then since the structure is changes to the determinate structure, and then this cable force will be accordingly determined. So that was the traditional methods I uh, have checked. And now we want to move to the unknown load factor of the MIDA server. So finally, I could see the how we can easily determine the cable force with MIDA server. Using the unknown load factor function of MIDA server, so try and error procedure can be just deleted. So basic concept of this unknown load factor is engineer will make their own constraint condition. They can make the constraint condition with the member force or the displacement, like the horizontal displacement of the pylon or the vertical displacement of the main gutter. And then with that condition, program will try to find out the optimized cable force. And there are several options when we find the optimized cable force. When we calculate the initial ca cable force, so object function will be used. And that object function, we can select among these three options, linear, square, max, absolute. Linear is, uh, this T stands for the uh, unknown load factor. And this W stands for the weighted factor here. If we want to um, manually increase the scale factor for the certain cable, then we can change the factor here. So by multiplying these two value, and then the absolute value of this summation, this value, and then make the summation. So that is the linear option. And square option is making the square and the make the summation. And maximum absolute, as you can see, the make the absolute of that value and then find out the maximum. So if I explain just like this, it would be not very um, intuitive for you. So I draw one picture. So let's say we make the constraint condition. Constraint condition can be made 
with the equality or inequality condition. So if we make it as the inequality condition, it will just give the range. So in let's assume we give the inequality condition with the, let's say we have the two cable in this example. So we want to find out the cable force of the T1 and T2. So for one constraint condition, we could find out certain range less than this line, oh, sorry, and also the other constraint condition less than this line. Let's say we have one more the constraint condition larger than this line and the cable force should be larger than zero. So let's say this blue area is the solutions satisfying our inequality conditions. It means that we have the number of solutions, not just one value. And then how to determine the optimal cable force among these number, numerous solutions. That is these three options. Firstly, if we look at the linear, the linear equation, the previous one, this value was, uh, I made it as the x1, and then also summation, they use the absolute summation, so x2 is also simply summated. So that will be, will have a certain uh, solution. So if we look at this equation, it is just a simple um, linear equation with the k value, which has the this y-axis cutting. So let's say this red line is this represents this uh, linear equation. So making the set, we can make the several red line, but my dust server will try to find the solution which minimize the given object function. So among the several, this red line, the smallest one, minimized one will be this, this line, which cross the area over here. So this value, this root set of the T1 and T2 will be the optimized cable force when linear option is being selected. What about the square option? If you look at this equation, you will realize it will be the equation of the uh, lounge. So with this, uh, we can generate the several lounge which will meet, which will cross the area of this blue. And the smallest lounge will be this green one. So with this smallest lounge, and uh, crossing the this blue area, this green dot will be the minimized solution when the square option is selected. What about the maximum absolute? So the maximum value of the x1 and x2 will be found. x1 and x2, maximum value among these two the smaller one between two will be used. So let's say T2, this one was smaller than this one. In that case, they, it will be selected as our the optimal cable force set when the max absolute will, is selected. So when the inequality condition is entered in the constraint condition by the user, in that case, it means the optimized force set is not just one value. It will have certain range. Among this range, how to determine the optimized cable force? Using these three options, we can determine the optimized cable force set. And program will try to search the optimized force set, which minimizes the given object function.
and if we look at the dialog box here, we can see the sign of unknown. So the unknown factor can be found by the program, but whether it will be the positive value, negative value, or both positive and negative we want to find. Among these, we can select. So depending on that option, just like this, in this case it was found only in between the positive value, but if not in the cable state bridge and also it's more common to find the unknown load factor only in the positive value because there will be no negative uh, pretension in the cable, but not the real cable state bridge, but different type of the structure if the negative forces are allowed since our structure is just a trust behavior. In the case, a negative option or even the both option can be used based on the structure type and the force unknown load factor we needed. And in the dialog box here, also additional option you can see simultaneous equation method. Simultaneous equation method can be used when the this constraint condition is all entered with the equality option. So it's not giving the lanes if it gives the exact of, uh, equation. And if the number of unknown roads and the number of equations are equal, it means we do not need to go to the optimized process. In that case, we can simply solve the equations. So in order to find out the exact solution, not, the, not between the range, in that case, we can check on this option and then program will go not to the optimized solution, but it will try to give, it will give you the accurate solution using the equations and the on same number of the unknown nodes. And we can enter the constraint condition here. So constraint condition can be entered with the uh, member force or displacement. I will show you with the model for that. So here we selected the member force, but we can make the constraint condition with the reaction, displacement, thrust force, or beam force. So most common constraint condition would be the restraining the top pylon horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement of the center of the main gutter. Or just like this model, we can restrain the moment range of the main gutter. In this case, as I mentioned, so in case of the equality, we can specify exact value, or if we specify inequality, we can give you the range, and then the optimized range will be determined with this constraint condition. After entering the constraint condition, we can see such inference matrix. So from this inference matrix, we can find out how the cable force uh, unknown load factor has been found. Let's say I have restrained the moment of the element number 
I want to make the constraint condition. So my moments should be in between the 5,000 from the minus 5,000. So in between this range, I want to have my moments under this loading condition. So this part, this blue line, this part is the uh, moment or the displacement at the corresponding elements here or corresponding nodes due to the unit loads applied for each load case. So when the unit loads of this T1 is applied, my moments becoming this and similarly like this. So due to the, we can check the effect due to the unit loads. And what is the, so this part is the optimized uh, unknown load factor found by the program. So this 5,000 finally calculated is the summation of the these two value multiplied each other. So if I show you this program again, unknown load factor found and for more details we can see this uh, influence matrix and we can also see this with this uh, table, unknown load factor matrix table. And these value are the one obtained due to the unit load. Due to the self weight or the superimposed dead load is not by the unit load, just the load itself because they were not unknown. And then those are the unknown. So let's say Due to this load, and this is due to the, uh, this is the loading factor, and this is due to the union load. So we can see the what will be the effect of this uh, when this unknown load factor is actually applied. So after that, finally, if we make the summation of all of them. So we can see the summation is identical to this value applied here. So using this uh, calculation, the program tried to find the, uh, optimize the force or the displacement, which is satisfying the constraint condition I made. And this was the one the found by the program for the unknown load factor. So this unknown load factor, if we see without the influence matrix, so only the unknown load factors and their value and my constraints range can be checked from here. What I can do now is I can make the load combination. So this was the previous uh, load combination I had with all the loads combination S1 and this is the one just found by the program. So unknown load factor has been entered as the uh, load combination loading factor. So in this model, if we try to check the changes of the member force, for example, the previously we had the bending moment distribution just like this. Before we have the unknown load factor, 
And after unknown loading factor, so we can see our moment distribution of the main gutter is in between the desired range. And also we can check the deflection of the horizontal deflection of the pylon or the vertical deflection of the main gutter. So about two centimeter, we have the vertical deflection in the center of the main gutter and about three centimeter of the horizontal displacement we have. If we want to have more uh, smaller displacement, we can additionally add the constraint condition in the unknown load factor and then we can repeat this process. So, how to enter the unknown load factor constraint condition? So, generally, as I mentioned, the, we, we can restrain the horizontal displacement of the top pylon and then vertical dis displacement of the center node of the span. After we get the converged lizards, and then we can increase the number of conditions, constraint condition, and also we can try to decrease this range. So that is the way how we can use this unknown load factor more accurately. We cannot enter every single condition at the at one time and in that case, sometimes the program could not properly find the optimized force. So in, in the case, uh, using this procedure, we can use the unknown load factor better. So this is a similar notes that uh, you can check it later. So this is the same uh, concept I just explained. When if the if we cannot find the unknown load factor that desired, then firstly we can enter the proper constraint condition and then try to find the uh, first set of the unknown load factor. After that, using that pretension, apply that pretension to the to our model, and then we can repeat the entering the additional constraint condition, and the, in order to find the satisfied constraint condition in the model. So we can repeat the procedure in order to find the more satisfied results. Finally, uh, today's final topic is cable force tuning. Cable force tuning is quite simple, so I want to just to briefly show you how we can use it. What is the advantage of using that? In order to use the this cable force tuning, firstly, we need to have the load combination, like the what we obtained from the unknown load factor or we can manually enter such load factor. And also in order to, the benefit of cable force tuning is we can, uh, in the real time, without performing analysis, we can check the effects of the cable force for the main gutter diagram or the displacement of the pylon or main gutter displacement as well. So what we need to do is we need to have the certain group, structural group for to be used in the unknown uh, cable force tuning. So for example, I want to monitor the my gutter moment and also my tower horizontal displacement. So go back to the cable force tuning, select my load combination and I want to monitor the tower displacement and main gutter. And my main gutter, I want to keep the range of the moment. So we can 
display the range in the graph at the same time. With this, if we modify any of the cable pretension force, we can just drag and drop, or we can type the value directly from here. And the changes of the forces will be directly applied without performing the analysis. So surely after that, in order to getting the exact results, we need the reanalysis. But just for the tuning the cable force, which requires the many try and error. In the case, the instead of performing every single time try, we can easily change and check the effects of the changes of the cable force more easily using this function. And let's say this part exceeded my desired range and I want to change the corresponding cable pretension force. But uh, I don't know which cable force I should change. In that case, I can open the matrix. So this 10, 12, I, which is here. So I want to determine which cable is most governed one. And we can see that this T12 is most governed cable for this element. So we can try to change the cable force of the T12. For example, we can try to increase the cable force and we can see in the real time how their force is being changed. Or we can directly type the forces in here. And the effect will be reflected. After determining the final cable force, then we can even save it in the load combination. In the previous one, as you can see, the changes has been made here. Or we can even update the model here. In that case, the reanalysis is required. So program will update this value into the model, in the, into the cable pretension force, and then analysis will be re-performed. So that is the benefit of the cable force tuning function. So that up to here is the main part I prepared today. And I have two more slides. Uh, and when you are dealing with the uh, technical support with the engineer who is uh, doing the cable state bridge, sometimes they can ask you when I need to use the nonlinear analysis, like the equivalent truss element or even the true cardinal elements, when I should do that. And that is not exactly about the program usage, but and there is no uh, clear criteria for when exactly we should use the nonlinear analysis and when we do not need. But uh, there are certain um, rules, so we can introduce them with this rule. So as you could see, today we have checked up to the initial cable force determination. If the initial cable force is correctly found, it means the cable force will be above the 70% of the leading force. In that case, their behavior will be very similar to the truss element. So there will be no big difference when we use the cable element or just truss element. So basic assumption is the engineer should have the correct cable force set in the initial state. In that case, 
there will be no big difference even though they just use the trust element. So there will be no need of, the, of using the nonlinear analysis. However, in the, some special breeds, like the, when the span length is really long, like the stone cutter or stone bridge, which has larger than 600 meter of the main span. In that case, the, we cannot ignore the nonlinear behavior of the structure, the cable. So we recommend the engineer to use the nonlinear analysis. And even though we give this guide, but it could be not very clear for the engineer. In that case, in order to make sure whether they can go for the linear analysis or not, best way is performing both analysis for their trial model. So by performing both linear and nonlinear analysis and compare the results, so if both results has no big difference, in that case it means that they can go to the linear analysis. Most of the cable state bridge with uh, not very long span, in that case, um, engineers just to consider them as the, uh, in the linear analysis. And there is one limitation in the unknown load factor. So in, when we use the unknown load factor, we need to, this unknown load factor, as you could check, it uses the linear algorithm. So simple summation is being used. But if we use the cable element, for which the stiffness is keep changing, in that case, we cannot use this linear uh, summation algorithm. Because of that reason, in, when we use the unknown load factor, we cannot use the cable elements. So we should ask the user to use the truss element. As I mentioned in the most of the cable state bridge, so truss elements is acceptable. And what if they want to use the cable state cable elements after that? In that case, firstly, they can model the cable using the truss elements, use the unknown load factor, and try to find the cable force. After that, they can change the element type into the cable element with the equivalent truss or the cardinal element, depending on the analysis type they will go to. And in that case, they can enter the cable force as the pretension load. So if we enter the pretension load, which has been found from the unknown load factor into here, in that case, this value will have the priority. So we can enter any arbitrary value to the element force value. When we generate the cable element, we should enter LU or pretension or horizontal value. So this value, we can enter any arbitrary value. And then this value will be used for the analysis. So that's it for the
for the for part